difficult. Now, we're going to talk about genotypes and phenotypes. <laughs> they do rhyme, but apart from that, they're, they're, they're substantial. <laughs> but for the, for the non-experts in the room, and there's probably a lot of long-suffering partners in the room in particular, put very simply, what's a... <laughs> I get the impression there are. What's a, what's, what's a big round of applause for the long-suffering partners, please, ladies and gentlemen. I mean it, come on, give them a round of applause. They're the ones who just sit there nodding when you're talking to them going, yes, dear. What's, what's a genotype and what's a phenotype? Okay, when we talk about a genotype, um, it's looking at a change in your DNA. So for those who are not genomicists, we have three billion building blocks of B DNA, but actually we have six billion because we get three billion from mom and three billion from dad. And uh, when there are differences or changes in those letters, the A, G, T, and C, for all of those who did biology at school, um, that is a genotype, that is a difference. And that's a, a, a genetic classification. And we use those as markers, whether we want to understand population genetics, whether we want to understand disease risk, or whether it's linked as a direct link to a disease. So it's a difference in your DNA. And we link that to disease or to phenotype. And when we talk about phenotype, we talk about a trait or a characteristic or a disease. So it can be whether you're short, whether you're tall, whether you have blue eyes, whether you have brown eyes, or whether you have cancer or you don't have cancer. And that is a phenotype. And really to make sense of who we are as a human being, we have to understand both. We can't just look at DNA alone, and we can't just look at phenotype alone. We need to link those two. And that's the difficult thing to do. And so when we say your goal is to examine all diversity, all human diversity, even by your standards, that's not going to take <laughs> just sort of a fortnight to do. When, when, when did you first get that dream? I had that dream um, back when the Human Genome Project was still coming to an end. Back in uh, early 2000, I was working in South Africa at the time on HIV, and the patients that I was working on were um, of African ancestry. And we knew the human genome was coming out, we knew there were sequences out there, but it was not what I was seeing in my lab. The DNA was highly variable because people of African ancestry are much older. We all come from Africa. And I kind of felt research was being done back to front. What do you mean by that? Research had to be done in Africa, and then, like we all migrated out of Africa, then we can start looking at populations that have migrated out of Africa. But instead, because mainly driven by money, uh, most research is done in the Western world, where European or Asian populations are very young in genetic or genomic terms. So we were doing our research on the people that left Africa, and we weren't actually looking at the roots of mankind. So if we look at the roots of where we all come from, that's where we're going to maximize the information that we have. And so even though it's a smaller geographic area, what is there more diversity and complexity in Africa than there is in big sections of the rest of the world? So this is the way I like to explain it. Um, Africa has 2,000 languages. Now, we use language just as a proxy, because remember, anyone can learn a language, but you certainly can't learn your DNA mm -hmm. that you get, you get. But it's a proxy. It's an indication of how much diversity there is. But Africa holds at least, one, at least we think of maybe more, one third of the world's diversity. And the way you can sort of think of it, if you think of a big jar of jelly beans of all different colors, uh, we all lived in Africa, and that was all the different colors. And then the jar got tipped over, and a few fell out. And those few make all Europeans and Asians that we as we have today. But still, that diversity remains within Africa. So to understand all of us and where we come from, we need to go back to Africa. We need to understand our genomic profile by looking back in Africa. In fact, speaking of languages, you looked at two different Kalahari Bushmen who came from different language groups. Correct. They were both Kalahari Bushmen, but they were incredibly different. Yes, so um, two of the Kalahari Bushmen we, we looked at, um, they live approximately 500 kilometers from each other. Uh, one speaks a language called Zuklasi, the click, and the other one speaks a language called Naro. And in these two language groups, to us, they look exactly the same. To them, they say, no, 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 we're different. We don't understand each other. There was more genetic difference between these two men than there was between me and a, a, a Chinese person. Two groups that speak, uh, two Kalahari groups within a few hundred kilometers of each other. Correct. Can, does it make sense to ask the question, are we all the same or 
how similar are we? Does it, does it make sense to even ask that in a, in a genomic sense? Absolutely. Um, in fact, although, we, uh, underst uh, although most people, everyone in this room is trying to understand disease, I want to take the question the other way around and say, we need to understand what is a healthy person? To understand disease, we still need to understand what it is to be healthy. You like, so you like turning the things around. I love you like turning, turning the paradigms around. around. I love turning paradigms around because it makes you approach a question in a different way, but you're still answering the same question. So what is it to be healthy? Okay. What about monkeys? I've, I've heard that we're 98% the same as monkeys. Some people say we're 96% the same as monkeys. <laughs> How similar am I to a monkey? Well, Adam, <laughs> you're probably around 3% Neanderthal, but uh, um, no, so... Um, it's the first time anyone's ever said that. <laughs> um, I think the common um, misunderstanding here is that people think that we evolved from a monkey or a chimpanzee. But yes, we had a common ancestor with the chimpanzees. And we, uh, and in the ape kingdom, and we evolved side by side with them. And this common ancestor, we can use um, DNA and genomics to look back in time and to put a time point on that. And that time point is around seven million years.